Good evening, everybody. It's Matt Bowles here from Maverick Investor Group. I want to welcome you all to a really exciting event. Uh, this is called, What is the Best Real Estate Investment Software and Why? I'm super excited about this. We have an awesome special guest with us tonight who I'm going to introduce in just a moment. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to welcome everybody to the event and do a couple of housekeeping items. You have um, a control panel on the right-hand side of your screen, and that is going to allow you to interact with us. Uh, it's going to have a question box there for you to type your questions in. We are going to hold all the questions until the end of the webinar. And at the end of the webinar, we are going to take all of your questions. Many of them may be answered throughout the webinar as we go through it. Also, there is a uh, hand icon that you should see over there in your control panel. It allows you to raise your hand, interact with us, and so forth. So let's test that one out here by let me ask an initial question, which is how many people on the webinar tonight, how many of you, is this your first Maverick Investor Group webinar. It's your first event with us. If you have not been to a Maverick event before, raise your hand if that's you. Just click on that hand icon. Okay, great. So um, we'd like to welcome all the new people here. I also, of course, uh, recognize many of the uh, many of the longtime Maverick clients, and of course, uh, I'd like to welcome all of you back as well. So my name is Matt Bowles. I'm one of the founders and partners of Maverick Investor Group. Uh, you may, if you are new to Maverick, you may have heard of us. We've been featured in a lot of the real estate press. Um, we've also been uh, recently, we were this year awarded and named one of the top 50 real estate investment opinion makers and market leaders uh, across the U.S. for 2013 by Personal Real Estate Investor Magazine, which is the leading uh, industry publication for individual real estate investors. So um, just to give you a real brief overview in terms of what Maverick does, we provide basically two things um, for our community, the Maverick community, uh, of which you are a part because you are here. Uh, number one is that we provide you access to turnkey real estate investment opportunities. Okay, We provide you the ability to buy investment property in what we call investor advantage real estate markets. Okay, And we enable you to buy that real estate turnkey, meaning that it's either new or fully renovated property. It already has a tenant in place paying rent and it already has local property management in place. So it allows you to buy real estate in the best markets, regardless of where you live and to strategically build your portfolio so that you can generate passive residual income uh, and cover your living expenses to finance and design your lifestyle so you can recapture your time and design your lifestyle as you choose. Okay, that's the commonality uh, of the investors in the Maverick community. And that's the opportunity. Uh, one of the opportunities that we provide you is the access to the actual real estate investment properties to buy. The other thing that we do um, because we want all of our clients to be as successful as possible is we provide you access to industry experts, okay, who are, who are either product or service providers uh, who have a product or service that can substantially help you and help you to improve your success in the real estate investing game. Right. So that is uh, where we where we are tonight. Uh, and I am super excited uh, that my uh, friend Joel Grassmeyer uh, has been able to join us in person tonight. I have known Joel for about five years now. He's a real estate investor himself, first and foremost, uh, but he's also an engineer. He's an entrepreneur and he uh, really has been a pioneer in the real estate investment software space. Okay, again, coming at it from the perspective that he is first and foremost an investor himself. So he wants to develop software and create software that he himself can use for his own investments and that other people uh, also are going to be able to, uh, to use and drive a lot of value from. So he has been in this game so long. He created uh, the property tracker software, which is what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, Joel's here to talk about that, give you a demonstration and so forth. Uh, he created that back in 2004, okay, so about a decade ago. And over the last decade, he's been continuing to provide new features, uh, new updates, new improvements, new refinements. And so the way that the software looks and operates today is a world of difference from the way it was uh, in its first iteration back then. Uh, and he has agreed to come here uh, tonight. He's on the webinar with us now. Uh, to give you an overview of the 
most updated version of this software and what it looks like now in 2013 um, and the type of value that it can provide to you going uh, as you continue with your real estate investing. Now, one of the reasons that um, I asked Joel to come here tonight and to show you this is because I, I've seen two things going on in the real estate investment space as of late, right? Number one, obviously we all know we're in the we're in a boom cycle now, right? We're in a recovery, uh, an expansion cycle, whatever you want to call it. But uh, pr prices on properties are going up, and there's a lot of activity going on. There's a lot of new people getting in the game that haven't invested in real estate before. And th there's two things that have come to my attention recently. Number one is that when you're trying to evaluate properties, I've seen a lot of different property sellers. They're going to do their own pro formas, okay? And each seller is going to analyze a property and present the property in totally different ways. So they might leave out entirely, uh, some sellers might leave out entirely categories like maintenance, uh, repairs, uh, that kind of stuff. Other sellers might include a particular percentage. Other sellers might include another percentage, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So one thing that we've gotten from some of our clients is that a lot of this stuff is convoluted as they try to compare different properties and they don't have a way to easily uh, evaluate properties uh, um, objectively and according to their own personal criteria and not the seller's criteria or presentation. The second thing is that I've seen a lot of people try to uh, ameliorate this problem by creating their own spreadsheets, uh, you know, Excel spreadsheets and that sort of stuff. And I've just seen a lot of the calculations are totally off. Somebody email me a spreadsheet and said, why does this property have a 1.3% cap rate? And of course it didn't have anything close to a 1.3% cap rate, but the, the calculation was off in terms of how they did this and that. So there's a lot of real estate calculations uh, and, and there's a lot of uh, disparate information in terms of numbers and returns and all that kind of stuff. So what I wanted to do uh, based on a lot of this feedback we were getting, people were saying, hey, can you recommend to us a real estate investment software? What do you recommend? you know, and, and why do you recommend that particular software? So what I wanted to do was bring Joel here tonight uh, because uh, in the decade that I've been involved in real estate investing, um, I can tell you that this is the best software that I have seen. Okay. Uh, and so uh, I wanted Joel to come here tonight and present it to you himself, talk you through it, uh, give you a demonstration. Um, and, uh, and all of that so that you can see it firsthand from the creator of the software. Um, and then uh, you can also ask him your questions and so forth. But as we go through this now, uh, and I'm going to turn it over to Joel here uh, and let him take you through the rest of it. Uh, as we go through this, think about how this would apply to your properties. Now, both if you are already an existing investor and you own properties, okay, that's one category, but also... Uh, if you are looking to acquire properties and you're looking to analyze them and evaluate them and compare different properties before you buy, okay, both of those situations, uh, uh, listen very closely tonight uh, and think about your situation as Joel takes you through the software. So uh, without further ado, Joel, uh, welcome to the webinar. Thanks, Matt. Do you yeah, have, so as Matt. Do you have control of the, uh, of the screen now? Yep. Fantastic. I'll let you uh, take it away. Okay. Yeah, so as Matt said, I've been investing in real estate for about 10 years, and I really built PropertyTracker.com to scratch my own itch. Uh, I, I bought a bunch of investment analysis software when I got started, and uh, it was all pretty lousy. So I started by building my own spreadsheets, sharing it with friends and some investment networks in Southern California, and then people were telling me, hey, you should sell this. So I started a little side business um, working on uh, a web-based version of the software and the goal really is to uh, help you understand the numbers because real estate investing is a numbers game and in order to be successful you have to understand those numbers. And I saw, as Matt mentioned, so many people looking at projections given to them by real estate agents that didn't have the right cash flow, left out a lot of key assumptions and once you own some properties you're really running a business and you have to understand the numbers from a business perspective to make smart management decisions so even though you have property managers you still have to manage those property managers and things like Quicken and QuickBooks uh, which I've used um, 
for several things in the past. They're good at giving you things like cash flow and your income and expense breakdowns, but they don't go beyond the cash flow to show you things like your return on investment, your internal rate of return, whether you should do a cash out refi or sell a property, things like that. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that I built Property Tracker for uh, to scratch my own itch and to help other people out. Um, so Property Tracker is really seven tools in one package. Uh, it kind of takes you chronologically through the whole process of investment properties where you can start by researching a bunch of areas around the country, analyze some specific properties that you're thinking about buying, and then once you purchase the properties you can track the income and expenses every month, do some online tax preparation. There's online document storage for your leases, your management contracts, things like that. And then there's a calendar, uh, some contacts, and uh, a correspondence log. And I'll talk about each of those individually as we go on. So uh, just starting from the beginning, uh, the first thing you should do when you're thinking about buying some property is look at different areas of the country and also look at where we are in the real estate cycle. Uh, so I'll, I'll walk you through a demo where I'll take you back in time and we'll look at some of those cycles. Um, but that's very important. Different parts of the country react in different ways to different economic cycles. So you can look at it on a state basis. You can see the legend over on the right. Uh, this is the latest data from the second quarter of this year. Uh, and then you can click on a state to zoom into a particular area and then you see the individual cities within that state with their annual and quarterly appreciation. Uh, and I'll show you that as well. So let's just switch over to a demo real quick. And so I'm going to log into my demo account on PropertyTracker.com. So again, this is web-based software. You can use it from any kind of computer with a web browser. So I'm just going to log in here. And you can even have multiple people logged into your account at the same time. So if you wanted to have Matt take a look at one of the properties you were thinking about buying, uh, you could just share your username and password with him and then he could log in at the same time and walk through it together and look at some different what-if scenarios. Uh, so this is the first page you get to when you launch the app. We have the navigation over on the left here divided into some sections. And then uh, this main flowchart page kind of walks you through the steps. Uh, all these boxes have turned green because I've entered the data for these. Uh, but if I switch to a different property, maybe this one where I haven't entered all the data, you'll see I haven't put any lease data in for this particular property. So you start with the evaluator side before you buy it. And then after you own the property, you switch over to the right side on the tracker and start entering your tracker data and income and expenses and leases and all that. So we're still at the beginning here, so we're going to click on appreciation data down in the bottom of the menu on the left and start looking at uh, the current appreciation rates. Uh, so up at the top here you can see in the blue box I have a pull down menu where I can go back to any year all the way back to 1976 and I can choose any quarter within that year as well. So this is showing the most recent data. It comes from the Federal Housing Finance Agency uh, looking at literally millions of uh, data points of properties around the country. So uh, this is our latest data. You can just hover over a state here to see what the appreciation is. You can see the Midwest is you know fairly moderate and California, Nevada, Arizona, Florida are starting to go up pretty fast right now. But if we go back in time, let's go back four years to 2009, that was kind of the the down cycle in real estate. So those same states that are going up right now are uh, going down toward the bottom of their cycles back then. And you can see the Midwest, again, it's just you know small single digits. Uh, so that's a very linear market. They went down a little bit, but nothing like California or Nevada or Arizona. But then if we go back another four years, let's go back to 2005, now everything's red hot again. So this was at the peak of the last boom cycle. Uh, I think the California market peaked around 2006, so here it is going up 26%, 28% in Nevada, 29% in Arizona, 25% in Florida. Um, so things were doing great back then. And again, if you look at the Midwest, you know it was doing good, but not you know double digits or anything like that. So now let's go back to let's see the previous down cycle. 
uh, and I'm just going by the California market, was maybe in the, uh, I'll say, early 90s. Yeah, like here's California going down 4.8%. So this is back in 1994. This is after the Northridge earthquake. This is at the end of the Cold War. There were a lot of aerospace layoffs. One of the interesting things that was happening around this time was that more people were moving out of California than moving in at that time. And you can see where they were moving by this map. They were moving up the coast to Oregon and Washington, and they were moving up to the Intermountain West. You can see uh, Utah was 18%, even though California is going down, and Colorado was 13%. Um, but again, the Midwest is just kind of a linear market, you know, very small oscillations. So one strategy that you might think about, and you can keep doing this all the way back to 1976 if you want to kind of see what the, t the length of those cycles is, but uh, one strategy I really like is to, you know, buy in these areas that go through the uh, dramatic upswings and downswings when they're at the bottom of the market, uh, so like California, Nevada, Arizona, Florida, and then when those areas have peaked out, sell off those properties at the peak of that wave and just put your money somewhere safe like Texas, Indiana, Ohio, uh, places like that in the Midwest, in the middle part of the country. Uh, and then when things start picking up again, you know, shift your money back to these high appreciation states. Uh, so that's one strategy I've seen people use and that I've used myself. Um, so that's the, uh, the appreciation data there. Um, and we'll go back to the slides. What I'm going to do next is uh, go, go back to this flow chart here. I'm going to walk you sequentially through each of these steps, uh, but I'll do it showing the slides since they have a bunch of annotation on there. So let's go back here. Joel, let me just jump in while you're doing that and transitioning there. Folks, I want to mention that what Joel is showing you there is an incredible way to that he's been able to aggregate all of this historical as well as contemporary data on the home price appreciation trends in the various different markets statewide and then even drilling down to citywide so that you can see you you've heard us if you've been on maverick webinars before you've heard us talk about the property cycle you've heard us talk about where is a particular market in the property cycle right so three years ago a, a bunch of our clients we were getting them into the Phoenix, Arizona market in 2010, because it made a lot of sense. You could buy undervalued real estate, you could cash flow that real estate, uh, and it was about to soar up in value. Well, now it's soared way up in value. Uh, and what a lot of our clients are doing is exactly what Joel just said, is that they're selling out of that market, they're doing 1031 exchanges, and they're buying in other markets that are at earlier phases of the expansion cycle that still have more upside potential to go and that are getting you better cash flow numbers while you're holding. So that is a really significant uh, resource that Joel's put into this software uh, that you can just access all that historical uh, home price appreciation data. Okay, so... Joel, you just uh, went off there. I think you just... Um... You just clicked out for a minute. We can't hear you talking anymore. How's this? Can you hear that? Uh, yep, you're back. Okay, I'll just do it this way then. Um, so we'll we'll walk through three steps of entering a property into PropertyTracker.com. We'll start with the property data, then we'll do the mortgage data, and then we'll do the evaluator data. So basically this is a step-by-step -step process where all you have to do is fill in the blanks. So you can see we're putting in our property address here, our square feet, our purchase price, our initial market value. And the reason that's a different number is you may be buying the property below market value. So your purchase price is often less than the market value. And that basically represents instant appreciation. And then you have some depreciable closing costs, and those are sections 1100 to 1300. If, if you ask your lender for a good faith estimate, it basically looks like the HUD-1 settlement statement that you get when you close on a property, uh, but it's projected numbers instead of actuals. Um, and the tutorials explain all this as well. Uh, and then we have some other closing costs like prepaid items, taxes, fix-up costs, etc. And you can do an equity share percentage as well. Um, so if you're buying an equity share with someone else, you could say put in 50% for yourself, 50% for them. And then when you go and look at all of the reports later, 
you'll see, you can look at them with your percentage of the cash flow, return on investment, stuff like that, or the numbers for the entire property. The other advantage of that is you can share data between multiple accounts. So if you have a property tracker account and your investment partner has a property tracker account, you could be the bookkeeper and put the numbers in once and they would automatically see them reflected in their own portfolio. And then other properties that you own 100% of uh, would just be totally private within your account and likewise on their end. If they have some properties that only they own, they could just do the bookkeeping on those. So that's the um, property data. And let's see, let's go to the mortgage data. So you can put in two mortgages here and you can either put those in as a percentage of the purchase price or the initial market value or you can put in a fixed dollar amount. Uh, in this case I put in 80% of 110,000. You can choose from several different loan types. Here I chose interest only uh, ten, with a 10 year interest only term and a total term of 30 years and you can put in the interest rate or PMI or an add-on rate and then any loan origination fees as well. And for the purpose of evaluating a property, you don't have to put in the origination date. That's something you can fill in later when you actually know what your closing date is. So the next step is evaluator data. And uh, just like we had the map uh, before showing uh, the appreciation data for individual states, we also have the data for every metropolitan statistical area, or MSA, around the country. So once you put in the zip code in the first screen there, it figures out where your property is located and gives you the annual and quarterly appreciation rates. Uh, so you can use those rates if you want to or just use your own assumption based on what you think the future is going to be. Uh, then you can put in the rent for that property, the vacancy rate, and all your typical expense categories like management fees, maintenance, uh, association fees, and then any other costs that are either a fixed dollar amount or a percentage you can put in as well. Um, and then we've got our property taxes, our insurance, and some property managers will also charge an annual leasing or advertising fee. So based on those three screens of input, we create two reports for you. Uh, one is a first year performance projection and the other is a 10 year projection. Uh, so this one is the one year projection and uh, I'll dive into the details here. But you can print this to a single eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper you can go back to those three input screens and do a bunch of what if scenarios to you know say what if I put 30% uh, down how is that going to change my cash flow and return on investment um, so the other thing you can do is look at a map of the property or a satellite photo uh, this is just pulling data from Google Maps and I'll just walk you through each section of this report so the first table on the left here shows the address of the property our initial purchase information the down payment, the loan origination fees, and the closing costs. And when you add those together, you get your initial cash invested. So remember that number, 14100 We'll be referring back to that again in the future. So that's how much money you put down on day one when you close on the property. And then it calculates your cost per square foot and rent per square foot, uh, which is sometimes useful if you want to compare with other properties in the area. So here's our first year projection uh, details. We have an income and expense breakdown. So we account for vacancy right up front there. And after you subtract the vacancy from the rent, that's known as your operating income. And then down below, we have our operating expenses, which consist of all those categories that we put the numbers in for on the evaluator data screen. And it shows both the monthly and the annual amounts there. So if I subtract the operating expenses from the operating income, I get the net operating income. And you'll hear people refer to that as the NOI. And that's not really the cash flow on the property. That's before we've paid the mortgage on the property. So before, NOI is before financing. Um, so if we subtract the mortgage payment from the net operating income and our PMI, we get our before tax cash flow. And in this case, it's negative $99. Uh, per year or $8 a month. But then we still have to add in our principal payment and our appreciation to get what's called the gross equity income. So just like in stocks, if you were to buy a stock today, uh, you would get two types of return on that stock. You would get a capital gain, which is a cash return, kind of like the cash flow in real estate. 
and you would get um, or sorry, you would get a dividend, which is like the cash flow in real estate, and then you would get a capital gain, which is the increase in the price of the stock. Uh, and so your total return on that stock or that mutual fund would be the dividend plus the capital gain. And real estate is the same way where we have our cash flow plus our appreciation. And then paying down principal is just like um, you know putting money in your pocket uh, or adding value to the property or equity to the property. And then we have our potential tax savings with things like depreciation, and then we have our total income with the tax savings at the bottom. And then over on the right, we have the uh, mortgage information for the first and the second mortgage. And then we have some of the basic financial indicators that people like to look at for investment properties. Uh, the debt ratio, uh, that one's more for the banks. Uh, if you're doing commercial properties, the banks like to see a certain debt coverage ratio. Uh, and then we have the gross rent multipliers, uh, the cap rate, uh, and again the cap rate is the uh, net operating income divided by the purchase price or NOI over purchase price. And just keep in mind that the cap rate is before any financing. Uh, so the two numbers that I like to look at the most are cash on cash return and total return on investment. And then on the bottom we have the uh, the assumptions that go into the report. So the appreciation rate, vacancy rate, management fee, maintenance, and the equity share. So the other thing you can do um, back on that main screen of the first year projection is click on comparable sales and that will show you uh, Zillow's estimate of the property's value along with 10 comparable sales throughout the neighborhood. And you definitely have to take this data with a grain of salt. Uh, it's certainly not 100% accurate. Um, my rule of thumb is you can actually click on uh, the footer of the Zillow homepage and there's a link there that shows the accuracy of Zillow's data in different cities and states around the country and there are a lot of variables that go into it how much access they have to the MLS data within that state whether it's a non-disclosure state or a disclosure state that is does the purchase price of the property get recorded with the deed at the county office um, the other factor will be, you know, if you're buying a townhome that's in a development with a hundred other townhomes that have exactly the same floor plan, and there are a lot of recent sales in that neighborhood, the, the Zillow estimate is probably going to be pretty accurate. Now, if you have a mansion in Beverly Hills worth $10 million, and you have a view that none of your neighbors have, and you just put $2 million in improvements into that property, that's a very unique property that Zillow, you know, doesn't have a good way of getting a correct estimate on. So um, I'm sure Matt has a few of those, so he can tell you all about that. Um, yeah, and we've done and we've done some other um, uh, some other uh, service uh, service presentations for getting uh, rental market rent estimates. Uh, we've done a uh, a product called Rent Range. We've done a webinar for that, which is on the Maverick website, uh, which is going to be a much more uh, accurate and localized uh, estimate based on the data that they're using compared with Zillow and that sort of stuff. So there's different ways that you can uh, that you can corroborate this. We also help our clients get local broker price opinions. Of course, you can always get an appraisal and that kind of stuff. So uh, this is uh, you know one of the preliminary um, uh, pieces of investigation that you can do as you're starting to evaluate your property, and then you can um, you know compare that and add in all the other things that you find out um, along the way. Yep. So the next report is the 10-year projection. Um, so I actually like looking at this one more than just the first year report because unless you're fixing and flipping properties, uh, which is kind of a different line of business in itself, you're going to probably hold this property anywhere from 5 to 10 years uh, to let it really mature and produce a profitable return. Uh, so on the 10-year projection, we do the same kind of income analysis that we did before on the one-year projection projection. You can see a lot of the same numbers that we talked about before in that top table there. Uh, we also show the return on equity. Now that one is really interesting because what happens over time if you don't take action on a property like refinancing it or selling it and doing a 1031 exchange you get what's called debt equity building up in that property. So uh, as the market value goes up and as your loan balance goes down you've got a lot of equity sitting in that property and it becomes less and less leveraged over time. 
And you can see that reflected by this return on equity. In year one, it's very good. In year 10, it's not so good. So, you know, probably around year five, we want to take some action by doing a cash out refi or selling this property. And so down in the loan analysis section there, um, you can see our loan to value ratio going down over time. And you can see your potential cash out refi going up over time. Uh, so you can, you know, make that smart manage management decision about when to pull the cash out. Or at the bottom, you can look at the sale analysis to see your net profit on the sale and your internal rate of return and return on investment. And the, the one that really, if I were to look at one number on this whole report, it would probably be the five-year internal rate of return. That's a good number to use for apples to apples comparisons on properties, for buy and hold properties at least. Because the internal rate of return uh, basically makes an analogy to a savings account. So if you were to take that same $14,100 that we put down as our initial cash invested when we bought the property, and you were to put that into a savings account at a fixed annual rate of return of 22%, you would get the same net profit of $23,857 five years down the road. So uh, you can, I could go into that in a lot more detail, but it's actually covered in the last few pages of the evaluator tutorial. That's a PDF file you can download after you set up your account and log in for the first time. Um, but think of it as, you know, what would my annual uh, rate of return on a savings account have to be to match the performance of this investment property. So that's the 10-year projection. There are also a bunch of graphs shown below that table. Um, you know, if you're if you like to see things visually, you can look at the graphs. And I won't go into all the details here, but the main line to look at is that green line in the middle. That's your cash flow. And what happened on this property is uh, I think we had an interest-only loan that started amortizing in year five. Uh, so that's why our mortgage payment went up and our cash flow went down. And then the other two graphs show your market value going up over time and your loan balance going down over time. And then the blue bar in the middle is your equity, which also goes up over time. And then uh, the bottom one shows your internal rate of return over time. The other thing to realize, realize about buy and hold real estate investing is that you know if, if you buy a property that's fairly close to market value and try to sell it in year one, you're taking about a 10% uh, transaction cost on that property. So you might have you know maybe 3% up front in buyer paid closing costs and then you might have about 7% on the back end in seller paid closing costs. So you maybe pay 6% to the real estate agent and 1% in miscellaneous uh, seller paid closing costs. So if you sell it in year one that's not a very good investment and typically you have to hold on to it for a few, few years to let it appreciate and mature and then you'll do fine. And then you'll see it a lot of times, not, not every time, but sometimes you'll see it go down again in later years. And that's because of that factor I was talking about earlier where you're becoming less and less leveraged in that property and you're building up that debt equity or the lazy money in that property. And then you can also do an apples, comparison, apples to apples comparison of multiple properties by clicking on the brief summary. So that pulls out uh, some of the basic financial metrics and shows each of the properties side by side. So if you're thinking about buying these three properties, you might choose the top one there because it has the best return on investment. So all of that is the property evaluator tool. And propertytracker.com includes two tools. Property evaluator helps you evaluate properties before you buy, and then property tracker helps you track the performance of the properties you already own. One so the things, idea is you put one in of the things, money. Joel, if I can just jump in before you go into the property tracker, just yeah. about the evaluator part. I mean, one of the things, folks, that I think is so important about this, the evaluator portion of this, is that it allows you to set and use a uniform criteria. So if you're looking at three different properties, let's say, in the same market, okay, you get to set your own assumptions about, say, um, what maintenance uh, factor you're going to use, what vacancy factor you're going to use, what, if any, appreciation uh, assumptions you're going to use. You might just use zero and be really conservative about it and so forth. Uh, and then you can shift those up, uh, shift those up and down, right? So first of all, it lets you compare based on your own um, uh, criteria that you have made uniform 
so that you can actually do the comparisons. And then number two, it lets, lets you play around a little bit. Says, well, hey, what if my vacancy rate turned out to be twice as much as I thought it was going to be? What would my return be then? You know, would it still be a good investment? Or what if the appreciation didn't go up as much as I thought it would? Is it still going to be a good investment then? And it lets you play around with all these different assumptions and immediately comes up uh, with all of the uh, analysis and all the new numbers for you. So it's a really uh, incredibly valuable tool for real estate investors when you're looking to decide what properties uh, to buy, especially if you're getting it from different sources uh, and that kind of stuff. So that you can set your own criteria, you can set up your own uh, analytical framework, um, and you can you can buy based on uniform criteria, and that's what successful investors do. Yep. Yeah, those are good points. Yeah, I, I a lot of people ask me, you know, can't you just automate this so it just sucks data out of the MLS and creates these runs these numbers for me? And there are two reasons that I intentionally don't do that. One is, you know, the data in the MLS isn't really sufficient to do a true cash flow analysis on an investment property. The MLS is really primarily designed for owner-occupied properties. So the MLS doesn't know about your maintenance costs, sometimes about your taxes, HOA dues, insurance rates, um, you know, vacancies, things like that. Uh, so you really wouldn't get a complete picture if you did that. And then the more important reason is I want people to go through and do their own due diligence on a property. And when they see a blank uh, input uh, field there, they should go question that and say, oh, I guess I should go do some research on that and figure out what that number should be before I really decide on this property. And then the other good thing about the apples to apples comparison is it lets you kind of normalize properties that are in totally different markets. So you might have a property in California that has great appreciation but lousy cash flow and a property in somewhere in the Midwest that has great cash flow but moderate appreciation. And a lot of people, including a lot of real estate agents, don't really know how to do a true apples to apples comparison between those two different types of property. That's right. And then, and then especially if you combine some of these other tools, like we, like the rent range tool, which we, we did a webinar for again, and it's on our website there. You can go look at that tool. Okay. That allows you to actually determine a highly localized vacancy rate. Okay. What is the actual localized vacancy rate? So if you're going to buy a property in a particular community somewhere and then buy one somewhere else, you could put the actual specific vacancy rates of each of those local areas, you know, determine what those are and then insert them here so that you're really doing a highly accurate analysis um, of each property that you're uh, looking to track. Yeah. Um, so let's, yeah, let's talk about the property tracker. Uh, I'm going to cover all these points, so let's just go to the next slide. Uh, so the starting point for analyzing the performance of the properties you already own is putting in your monthly income and expense data. Uh, so, you know, most of the people that are doing this kind of buy and hold investing have property managers. So at the end of the month, you get a monthly statement from your property manager and you can just take the numbers off that monthly statement and type them into property tracker. Uh, I've also got a tutorial uh, online there and once you log into your account you'll see a tutorial on how to export data from Quicken and QuickBooks if you want to do that in parallel with Property Tracker. And if you do that, the way I look at that, uh, that's what I actually do myself, the way I look at that is Quicken and QuickBooks give me the raw data for the properties, uh, you know, all the individual transactions from the property managers and expenses and things like that, but they don't show me what those numbers mean and I put those numbers into Property Tracker, and that's like the instrument panel that shows me what that raw data means. Um, so I can make those smart management decisions. So that's the income and expenses. Uh, it's pretty easy, just fill in the blanks. And then you can look at a uh, Schedule E at the end of the year uh, for your taxes. So we use the same categories that the IRS uses on the Schedule E. So the number in parentheses is the line number on the Schedule E. And so they have, uh, you know, these expense categories numbered 5 through 17 that are their standard categories. And then you can add your own custom categories as well. And you can put as many of those as you want in there. And all of those go on line 18. And then we also calculate depreciation to get your, uh, your net income or loss for the property. So a lot of times that'll end up being a negative number because your depreciation gives you a paper loss even though you may have had cash income. 
And then we also show a detailed schedule of depreciation uh, to help you track your depreciable items and your improvements. So uh, you can't depreciate the land on a property, so you'll typically figure out for that particular area what the, uh, the dwelling value is relative to the land value, and you can depreciate the dwelling over 27 and a half years, as well as the closing costs. And then one thing I always encourage people to do is to um, segregate some of their depreciable items. So um, I just showed one example here of a washing machine because that's going to wear out far before the 27 and a half years. You know, the simple way would be just to take the total dwelling value and depreciate it over 27 and a half years. But the more effective way from a tax perspective is to break out all these items. And I've, I've seen people literally do this for dozens of items in the house. Uh, you know, the carpet, the washing machine, uh, parts of the landscaping, uh, different things that are going to wear out, the garage door opener, um, and you can accelerate the depreciation. And uh, there's there are some guidelines inside Property Tracker that show you what those depreciation periods are. And then another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that you're, the right way to uh, write off your loan origination fees is to amortize them over the life of the loan. Uh, so, you know, normally that would be 30 years, but most people end up refinancing somewhere along the way. And when you do a refinance, it'll show you all of the unused amortization that you can then write off completely in the year of the refinance. And then you start amortizing the new loan over the life of the new loan. Um, so that's a, a good way to save some money right there. And then finally, we have the detailed report. So this has the very same format that we looked at on the 10-year projection, but now it's based on our actual income and expenses rather than projected income and expenses. So it shows uh, some of the purchase information at the top right when you, in the month that you buy the property, and then your income and expense breakdown. And then below that, we have these three types of analysis again, the income analysis, loan analysis, and sale analysis. And this goes into a little more detail than before. Uh, it shows a, a more detailed breakdown of your mortgage payments there under the loan analysis. But the, the concept is the same. It helps you make the decision on whether to hold on to this property, do a cash out refi, or sell it and do a 1031 exchange into a few other properties. So the other thing um, that I find really useful in Property Tracker is these different uh, calendars. So here's one example of a lease calendar. Uh, it shows you in green where uh, the property is occupied, in white where it's vacant, and in yellow where it's uh, on a month-to-month -month lease. And so this helps you quickly spot any gaps in there. Uh, if a property manager forgot to send you a check one month, you'll see that show up there. And then also it gives you a heads up as to you know, when an upcoming lease will expire. And you can check that box at the bottom to say, email me so many days before a lease expires. And it will automatically send you that email and give you that heads up. So even though you have property managers that are supposed to be doing that, it's always good to be aware of it yourself. A month before the property goes vacant, send an email to the property manager, have them you know, do some research on the current market rents, have them start marketing the property, have them send the tenant a renewal notice, uh, maybe bump the rent up on that. And so just like we have a calendar for the leases, we also have calendars for the insurance policies and the management contracts, the rent received, uh, the mortgage payments, and uh, any notes on your income and expenses. Um, so here's the rent received calendar. Again, the, you can see the gaps showing up in white there. Uh, and then there's a contacts database, so you can store all of your contacts for properties, so your real estate agent, your lender, property manager, etc. And then with each of those contacts, you can also uh, record all of the correspondence you have with those contacts. And the main place that this is really useful is, um, well, one, to just you know keep a record of these things in case there's a disagreement later. You probably will have notes on this, but you're, the person on the other end won't, so you can refer back to it. But more importantly, if you're trying to qualify as a real estate professional, um, you have to show that you put in at least 750 hours toward your real estate investing business and that it's 50% of your total working hours. And uh, the IRS requires you to document that time uh, in case you ever get audited. So this would be the place to do that. 
And then another really big time saver is um, as you own more and more properties, it becomes more and more difficult to apply for the next loan to buy the next property. Because each time you fill out a loan application, the lender wants to know the current mortgage balance on all those properties, the present market value, the rental income on all those properties, the mortgage payments, the insurance, maintenance, taxes, etc. And then they're going to take 75% of your gross rental income and calculate a net rental income uh, based on that. And normally you're you know, it might take you an hour or two to dig through all your files if you've got a bunch of properties to pull all this information together. But here, since you've entered it into Property Tracker already, you just click one button and it puts together the schedule of real estate owned. And you can just um, print this off and uh, send it over to your lender and then they can enter it into your loan application. And this is really the main part of the loan application that changes from property to property. You know, the rest of your uh, income information and social security number, address, all that stuff stays the same. Um, so, you know, if you're working with the same lender uh, over the years, then, you know, they, they have that stuff on record already and you just need to send them an update of your schedule of real estate loan for the next property. There's also an interactive investment checklist in here and uh, I just put a bunch of uh, you know typical things that you should be checking on as you go through the escrow process and this just helps you prevent things from falling through the cracks especially if you're buying a bunch of properties at once it's very easy to you know forget to call to get the quote on insurance or you know select the property manager sign the management contract etc so this this lets you walk through each of those steps and check them off as you go and then there's online document storage as well. Uh, I recommend using the uh, Fujitsu ScanSnap scanner. It's a sheet feed scanner. It can hold 50 sheets of paper and uh, it does, I think, about 20 pages per minute, double-sided, full color. So you just put this thing on your desk next to your computer, stick a stack of closing documents in there, and it can be a mix of 8.5 by 11 and legal size. You push the button on the front and it puts a PDF on your desktop. And then you can upload that PDF to uh, Property Tracker and have uh, off-site uh, storage, basically, of that document. So um, I actually had one customer a few years ago who was on a scuba diving trip in Indonesia. And uh, he was going to close on a property the week he got back from his vacation. And while he was there, he went to an internet cafe, checked his email, and his lender said, we need a copy of these two leases. Uh, for your loan package, otherwise we won't be able to close next week. And he was kind of panicking, and then he remembered he had those PDFs and property trackers. So he just downloaded them to that little internet cafe and sent them over to his property or his lender directly from Indonesia. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you ever had a, a flood or a fire or something like that, it would uh, take you quite a bit of effort to call, you know, all the counties and the title companies to get all that paperwork back and property managers to get all your leases back. Uh, this way you've got a, a secure off-site storage for all that information. So how much does it cost? Um, so normally uh, if you were just to go to propertytracker.com as a member of the general public, you would see it's $24.95 a month or $249 a year, uh, but we have a special offer for Maverick investors of $19.95 a month or $199 a year. And you can get a free 30-day trial to go try it out. Uh, that has all the features in there. So just go to uh, propertytracker.com slash maverick uh, to sign up at that discounted rate. And uh, the best way to get started, as I mentioned before, is to uh, go down to the bottom of that menu on the left and click on Tutorials. And there are a few PDF files that you can download that will walk you step-by-step -step through evaluating and tracking a sample property. And if you ever have any questions, you can give me a call or uh, send me an email to support at propertytracker.com, and I'd be happy to help you out. So, uh, Matt, if you have any questions or if anyone else has questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Absolutely. Let me just check in with folks here, uh, and let me just ask a question again, uh, so we can use that we can use that hand icon there in your control panels. How many people think that it would be whether you own properties now? or whether you're looking at properties to buy and you're in the market, 
how many of you think it would be cool, raise your hand there, click that hand icon, if you think it would be cool to put either the properties you own or the properties you're considering to put them into Property Tracker and run all of these analytics on the properties. Raise your hand if you think that would be cool and you'd be able to do all of this stuff. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is this is the most comprehensive, robust, and sophisticated real estate investment software that I have seen anywhere. And there's not even anything close that I've seen uh, in, in the decade that I've been uh, involved in, in the real estate investment space. So uh, this really is the preeminent software uh, that we've seen. And now that you've, you've seen the demo, you can understand why. So uh, what Joel is offering to you uh, as a Maverick client, first and foremost, is a 30-day free trial. So uh, everybody should definitely check it out for 30 days. Uh, you just go to propertytracker.com backslash Maverick. Uh, that's our affiliate link. And, and when you go through that link, that's how they know that you're a Maverick client and that's how you're going to get the special deal. OK, but everybody can try it out for 30 days, right? For 30 days, put your properties that you currently own in there, run all these reports on them, get all this updated stuff. You can print it out. You can save it, all that stuff, uh, you know, throw in all the properties that you're going to be evaluating over the next month, drop them into property tracker, compare that or property evaluator, compare them. Uh, do all that stuff, play with it, have fun with it for 30 days. I mean, it's totally free. You're just able to go ahead and do that and try it out. Check out the tutorials that Joel told you about um, that explain all this stuff. Uh, get educated on all of these real estate investment um, uh, analysis, okay? And all these different uh, calculations, right? Uh, understanding what the internal rate of return is and what some of these other more advanced calculations mean. They've got tutorials on all that stuff. So. Definitely check that out, play with it, use a 30-day trial, uh, I'll try it out with some properties that you're involved with, see how you like it. And then if you do uh, like the software and you want the software, uh, because you're part of the Maverick community and because you come through this link, you're going to be able to get uh, about a 20% discount uh, from what the general public uh, gets this software for. So just propertytracker.com backslash Maverick. That's how you get the special deal. That's how you get the discount. So go through our affiliate link there uh, and you'll have access to all of that. And with that, uh, I would like to open it up now for questions. If you have questions uh, about the software, about anything that you've seen, I know that was a lot of content uh, and it's a lot of different features that are offered here. Uh, but go ahead and type them into the question box right now. Uh, if you do have questions, we will ask them to Joel. But uh, Joel, so you've, you've uh, I know this has been a work in progress over the last 10 years and you've been continuing to, to add and to evolve and to put more and more stuff and you've really taken, you know, I mean, I can see the, that you've taken feedback from the people that have used the software. They've given you feedback about, hey, could you add this? Could you do this? And you've continued to develop it and make it even more and more robust over the years, right? Yeah, it's kind of a fine line. Um, you know, I see, I, I've looked at almost all the real estate investment analysis software out there, and it ranges from, you know, simple, stupid spreadsheets for 50 bucks to, um, you know, stuff that runs on a, a, you know, Windows desktop for thousands of dollars. And I, I kind of see, you know, mistakes on both ends of the spectrum where, you know, the, the simple spreadsheets don't really have enough information to do a proper analysis. But at the same time, there's a lot of software that has too much information. And it creates this paralysis of analysis where you're looking at these 20-page reports full of all kinds of numbers that are really only used by, you know, professional commercial investors um, that, you know, residential uh, smaller investors, individual investors, don't really need to look at. Um, so I, I always try to, I, I get feature requests for all kinds of things, and I always try to make a balance between making it clean and simple and easy to use versus making it, you know, produce meaningful reports. Right, um, and, so I, I, and, I, and I should actually have, have that's a very important caveat, Joel. When, I, when I'm saying this is the most comprehensive, robust software that I've seen, I'm talking about that's specifically designed for residential, individual residential property investors, right? So right, certainly right. There's, there's, you know, big corporate, commercial, professional, 
you know, stuff out there, whatever. But that is that is not going to add the highest value to individuals that are doing residential property investment. So the way that Joel has customized this is what makes it so particularly unique, uh, in my view. And I don't know anything that um, anything that compares with it in terms of how he's positioned it. Um, Joel, we do have some questions coming in, so let me just um, let me just uh, roll them out here. Uh, the first question is, can you run an aggregate portfolio report? For example, can you see a summary of the cash flow vacancy uh, rolled up at the portfolio level versus just individual property by property? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so let me actually go back to the detail. Well, actually, here, I'll just switch to the demo and we'll do it. Um, let's go here. If I click on uh, the detailed report here, uh, I'm under tracker reports, detailed report. What I can do is select all of the properties in my portfolio here. And let me go back to a year where I put in some data uh, and I'll say update report. And so now it's showing me the combined performance of all five of those properties in my portfolio. Um, so I can see my combined cash flow, my combined potential cash out refi, my combined internal rate of return, and all the graphs below reflect those numbers as well. Um, and then the other thing that I like to do, about every six months to a year, I like to go in and do a property by property analysis. Um, so you can see up in the controls at the top here, you can rearrange the rows and the columns of that report however you want to see them. And you can do it over a range of years. You can do it with the properties in the columns. My favorite report is selecting all the properties, putting the properties in the columns for a specific year, and then uh, scrolling down. And if you look at the bottom here, you can see that it says this report includes the following properties, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I haven't put in data for all of these properties, and I've been playing with these numbers, so they may not represent you know, realistic numbers. but. Um, anyway, you get the idea where it shows you, you know, for all five of these properties, which ones are the peaches and which ones are the lemons. So if these were my real numbers, I would say number four is doing great, number one is doing terrible, number two I haven't put any data in, uh, and then numbers three and five, uh, maybe it's just early in the process of those properties and I'll give them another few years to mature. Um, so. Uh, again, I, t I like to do that in the middle of summer around July and then I do it around February again around tax time because that's when I'm pulling together all these numbers and double checking them and putting in my market values and things like that. And uh, that was one thing I actually didn't get a chance to show you is uh, you can go back for any of these properties and put in as many of these market values as you want over time. Uh, I don't know if I've done it for any of the other ones here. Uh, let me just try one more. Yeah, so here's one where I put in the initial market value of 106,000. A year later, I put in 115,000. So it's going to basically connect the dots with straight lines between each of the points you entered. And then it's going to use this appreciation rate to extrapolate beyond the last point you entered. Uh, so it, it gives you full control over all the assumptions that go into these properties over time. Great. Okay, the next question is, uh, Joel, will this uh, software work for two to four unit uh, properties or even larger multiplex properties? Yeah, it does. So uh, in the property data screen here, um, I can put in the number of units. So let me just go to, oh, let's say this duplex. Maybe I did it for that one. Yeah, so you can see on this duplex here, I put in two units. And now when I go to the income and expense screen, um, I can click here and you'll see that instead of one column for putting in the numbers, I have three columns. I have some things uh, that might be attributed to the entire property, like insurance. Maybe that's something that I pay for the whole property. But then I have things like rent for the individual units. So I might have $450 on unit A and then I might have $500 a month on unit B. So I can put in you know, numbers for each individual unit or the entire property. Okay, uh, great. The next question is, uh, can you please repeat the name of the scanner that you mentioned uh, that scans multiple pages and creates a PDF? Yeah, let me just see if I can show you here. Uh, if you go to amazon.com and search for 
there it is. Fujitsu Scan Snap. Uh, that's the one that I use. I've I've used about three models as they've been improving them over the years. Um, and it's pretty small. It sits on your desk, and you can throw 50 sheets of paper in there and scan things really qu quick. It, uh, let's see, it says 25 pages per minute here. Um, it also comes with the full version of Adobe Acrobat, which lets you turn any file on your Mac or PC into a PDF file. So whether it's a Word document or an image, you can turn it into a PDF. Um, and normally Acrobat itself sells for, I think it's about $300, so it's a pretty good deal. You'll get a lot of use out of it. Great. Um, okay, the next question is, uh, let me just make sure I understand this here. It's kind of a long one here, uh, Joel, so I'm going to just read it out. Um, um, one potential concern I have for moving all of my homegrown tools and analysis to a web-based platform, uh, which I totally think is an advantage, is that if at any point the company decides to stop supporting it or other events happen, since the benefit would be to load data in here and not in my own tools, there is some risk of data loss. Thoughts right. uh, on how this is addressed and are current customers exporting data files out on an annual basis and storing them off-site? Yeah, you can certainly do that. Um, you know, uh, every year you're creating the Schedule E for your taxes, and that basically, well, I'll make a few points here. That basically records the annual numbers for all of your properties when you do your taxes because that has your income and expenses totaled up for the year and uh, a lot of the basic numbers there. Um, and related to that, if you have properties that you've owned for, let's say, 10 years, you don't want to go in and put in every month's worth of data over the last 10 years. But what you can do is go to the Income and Expenses screen and just click on December of um, each of those previous years that you've owned the property and put in the totals, the annual totals, off of your Schedule E's for those prior years. And, you know, the month by month, numbers won't be correct, but at least the annual numbers like you know cumulative cash flow and things like that will be correct over the years. And then in terms of exporting data, uh, you can go into this detailed report here and um, you can export this to Excel at any time. So I can display you know whatever numbers I want in this report, click on export to Excel and you know if you do that once a year for each of your properties, you've captured the most important data. You know, the other stuff is pretty trivial, like the address of the property and stuff like that, so. All right. Um, but in general, though, in terms of data security and data being backed up and data not yeah, disappearing. Yeah, so this isn't kind of something, stuff. you know, that I run out of, out of my garage or anything like that. Uh, I have a dedicated server in a data center with, you know, all of the standard firewalls and encryption, uh, password protection. Uh, that's that sort of thing. Uh, I've had this site up and running since August of 2004, and I've probably only had a total of maybe one or two days of downtime, and that is, you know, in little blips of a few hours here and there as they do maintenance on, you know, networking equipment in the data centers and things like that. And all of the data gets backed up every night off-site, so, um, you know, if the hard drive on the server wherever to crash, I can do an instant restore, so. All right, great. All right, so I, uh, I know we're uh, hitting the top of the hour now, so I want to, uh, I want to bring this to a close, um, but uh, Joel, can you go back to the final slide on, uh, on the, uh, the presentation there so folks can see the website again where they can go uh, to get the free trial uh, and then also to get the discount. So again, folks, this is our affiliate link. It's propertytracker.com backslash maverick. By going through that link, that's going to give you um, the opportunity to, uh, first of all, take the 30-day free trial run, uh, take the test drive, try it out, check it out, uh, play with it, enjoy it, learn about it. Um, and then uh, if you do, if it does um, uh, feel like a good fit for you and something you'd like to continue with, you're going to be able to do that at a special discounted rate um, because you went through the Maverick link uh, and you're part of the Maverick community. Joel has offered that uh, to you. So uh, you can go ahead through this link, propertytracker.com backslash Maverick. Try the 30 days. 
uh, trial. And then uh, from there, you can decide if you want to continue. Uh, and if so, then you get the special discounted rate. And with that, uh, Joel, I would like to thank you so much for taking the time to uh, be here with us tonight uh, and to uh, share your product with us. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. Have a great night.